All right. Welcome, everyone. Our next guest is current U.S. men's national team player, Vancouver Whitecaps star Julian Gressel, our former teammate and MLS Cup 2018 champion with us with Atlanta United. So we are excited to speak with him today. Julian Gressel is by far one of the most used examples within our Beyond Goals mentoring program in regards to how good of a rookie he was every single day. He came in and took everything in, asked so many different questions, sat around with all of us old veteran guys and took everything in to the best of his ability and now uses it during his whole entire career. Yeah, it's been quite a rise for Julian from college player um, to U.S. men's national team player in six or seven short years. So um, yeah, pretty, pretty remarkable, an awesome pathway. And uh, so we'll dig into his brain about uh, his mindset, how he got to where he is today. So looking forward to this conversation. Enjoy everybody. First question from me is, uh, how'd you end up in the U.S.? Like, why, why college here in the U.S.? Was that always what you wanted to do? Was that a different pathway that you sought to turn pro? Talk us through kind of how that came about. Um, yeah, I mean, it was, uh, it was the decision for me that I basically made long term. Uh, that I didn't make, uh, you know, about the new future. I made it a long-term kind of decision because I have to go back kind of to to tie it all into, you know, a, a really good answer here. I think you have to go back to when I was 15. I got told that I wasn't good enough um, at a pretty high academy in Germany and that, um, you know, would have eventually kind of led me to a pro path, the easiest. Um, so I basically got, you know, got cut from the academy. I wasn't developing fast enough, all of that. So. Um, that in the back of my mind kind of, um, you know, I always knew from that point on, once I got over it, you know, I needed to get over it first. It was a, a difficult thing for me as a 15 year old to handle. Um, once I got over that, I was like, okay, I gotta do school. I gotta, you know, be prepared for life. And, you know, it's not, not going to turn out maybe potentially the way I want it to be in terms of becoming a pro player and having this great career and making a lot of money and all that. Um, so. Ultimately, that's why I decided to go to the U.S. and to college. I liked, obviously, the culture and I liked the, um, the settings that it brought. Um, while in Germany, I was basically at a crossroads. I was uh, playing well in the fourth division, the highest amateur division. I had some, some offers from third Bundesliga teams. Um, but that would have been like, you know, a developmental contract. And, you know, we'll see kind of how it goes. And, nothing amazing in that sense and certainly not great money so i knew i wanted to go to university at the same time and, and continue you know with that in in, in in mind and um college just offered the best uh kind of of both worlds you know i was able to go to school get a degree at the same time as play at a you know what i thought a decent level and what I, you know thought of what i was putting to put into a place where i could develop still as a soccer player and um, that's why I decided to do it. I obviously had the thought in mind of, okay, if it doesn't work out, work out, I can always go back. Uh, you know, I maybe would have lost a semester, which is like six months at the, at the worst. And um, then I can find my way in Germany again. And, um, but yeah, it was definitely a decision that I made to, to you know, not just think about my, the best way of, of how I can progress as a soccer player, but the best way I can become a man and I can I can grow up, um, you know, in terms of in terms of making money, um, starting a family, all those types of things, you know. Yeah, totally. And so if, if, if I'm correct, so up until 15, the goal was always to turn pro from the academy into the first team over there in Germany. Right. It wasn't until you got cut at 15 that it was all of a sudden, OK, let me find a different pathway. Let me let me adjust things, change my goals. Um, and start a new sort of yeah absolutely i was in that academy i think it was Greuther Fürth. it was the second bundesliga team established club like very good academy you know played at the play at the highest levels and you 15 you 17 you 19 so 
Um, you know, I only I was I was at that club since I was I think you at nine. So like, you know, the past six, seven years, I didn't know anything else. You know, it was you live and breathe, you go to school just so you get to go to training in the afternoon, you know? Um, it was always kind of that was the goal to go through all the steps and then make it pro. I think there's like two people that ever made it that that, that ever actually, you know, for them it actually happened that way. But yeah. um you know, I'm I'm living it every day. I'm trying to do my best. I'm I'm trying to do that, and uh, definitely that was the goal. So that's why, you know, that that conversation when I was 15 or when I when I did get cut in that sense, it was it was tough, and it took me a while. But at yeah. the same time, you know, looking back, it was the best thing that happened to me. <laughs> Julian, one thing one thing that we talk about with most kids is that it's never a, it's never a straight lineup, right? There's so many. Yeah. Uh, bumps and hurdles and obstacles you have to go through at, at that age of 15 uh, how do you feel like that that moment of failure and building resilience has kind of helped you throughout the longevity of your career so far how do you think that particular moment of failure has ultimately helped you uh with with the correct mindset throughout the years it has helped me tremendously um it has helped me in so many ways in terms of you know being resilient being you know, a guy that, um, you know, can also talk to other, you know, younger guys now in the locker room and, um, you know, share that knowledge. But it's it's taught me that, um, like you're saying, it isn't a straight line. It's not just going to go the way you think it is. Um, and, and it also opened my eyes to so many more things that I now enjoy on the other side of, like outside of soccer. Like, you know, I, 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 took after that you know I got cut I I ultimately wasn't having that much fun anymore because I wasn't playing as much either and you know I kind of like you kind of saw it coming a little bit looking back obviously I was pretty naive at that time so maybe not me in that moment but um so you kind of saw I, saw, I kind of saw it coming and then it gave me the opportunity to to take a, a a different approach to soccer to really enjoy it again and and that uh, and not just have it be like, oh no, I got to keep training so I can, you know, become a pro and, you know, you kind of fall into this, you know, this pattern, but it really gave me, it, it, I played at a lesser league with all my buddies and I had a great time, you know, we had, we enjoyed it. Yeah, it was still competitive and we still wanted to win and all that, but just, um, it was a lot more fun, you know, and, and, and I, I had a lot more fun and then I decided to take a gap year from school to, you know, go go away as an exchange student to the U.S. for the first time. And that's kind of how I got in touch with the culture for the first time and everything. But stepping out of my comfort zone at, at 16 years old to leave home for nine months to, to attend school in the U.S. Um, and play soccer for a high school team, which, I mean, the level was like, I don't even know. It's, it's bad. It was bad, you know, but it was just fun. And um I played golf, I played lacrosse, I played all these other sports that, you know, I all of a sudden just became interested in, in kind of so many more things. And um, it really taught me to, to just enjoy it more. Um, and, and now that's the one thing that if there's one advice that I always give for young kids is have fun. It's enjoy, enjoy the process, enjoy it as much as you can, because then everything else comes so much easier. And uh, that really just, yeah, it gave me that perspective that I needed, you know, a couple of years down the road to um, to then, you know, be in college as well and, and be like, OK, you get to enjoy it again, you know, like like go and enjoy doing one on one work with a coach, you know, watching film, you know, all that type of stuff was then it didn't become so so rigid almost so like so forced you know in a sense no I, I have to do this this is my dream like let's go you know no it, it didn't become that anymore it didn't become this forced thing it was just kind of having fun you know and, and that's I think the best thing yeah it always comes back to love that's, of the game yeah that's yeah. right and that's what that's really what it came back to me for like that's what that moment um kind of taught me you know and then I, I played with my friends i played with my buddies i went out like in germany I, I played uh you know u19s for my hometown club where i walked across the street to the field uh, and in germany you get to go out when you're 16 already so i, I would go out the night before games like I, you know this is like this is crazy stuff don't do this obviously but um you know it's it just like you just you just didn't see it as this 
this is okay. You know, I have to go to training at times and I have to, you know, play these difficult matches. I have to be gone all weekend. No, it just became so much more than that. To, um, and it frees you up in a sense as well. Totally. Yeah. yeah that's awesome. Um, what a, what a great story. Um, <laughs> um, I think the next thing I wanted to ask about was, so when you get drafted as a pro, right, and you're going to Atlanta United, and Atlanta United is spending millions of dollars on attacking players, um, and you know here you are as a college drafted player, right, and you got to be thinking, like, shoot, this is going to be really challenging um, to get time on the field. When we're when Atlanta United is spending so much money on these foreign players, um, especially in the attacking half of the field, which you at that time were an attacking player. Um, so, but then day one, there you are starting lineup, you know, and then day two and day three and day 60 and day 200. And so, I mean, from us, you always came across as a confident kid, a confident player, but talk us through like that transition from college to pro and was it, were you always confident? Did you have doubts? Did you have the confidence? Was it an issue? Were you um, relishing the challenge of, of trying to be a starter? Did you have the goals of being a starter kind of? That mentality of that first preseason, um, if you remember back, I yeah, it was it was an interesting uh, thing. You know, it was an interesting situation I kind of got into, and uh, um, I was just I tried to to just go in there with as, as much of an open mind as I possibly could. I knew that I wasn't going to play center forward. I knew I wasn't going to play right wing, like right as my or whatever I played in college, you know, I knew that my role on the field would somewhat have to change. Um, so I didn't try to um, come in there and say, hey, you know, I got drafted in the first round and here I am, you know, knowing obviously what you said, how much money they had spent and um, what type of players they brought in as well. You know, it was um, it was great. It was it was crazy, you know, to walk into that um, for me. But um, I just try to go in there with the same mindset that what had gotten me to that point, you know, in college of, of, you know, going to college and trying to see what it is like, you know, trying to be who I am, um, trying to play the way I know I play, trying to obviously learn every day and get better every day from, you know, guys like you, you two, and then that have obviously, um, took me under their, their wings from the start and, um, and then just kind of see where it leads me, you know, and see where, see where it gets me. And, um, it was, uh, yeah, it was certainly something that every training session, I just tried to be consistent. I didn't try to overdo things. I didn't try to, um, you know, have a really, really good day one day and then, you know, not so great. The next day I tried to, you know, kind of show that, you know, I'm mature enough at that level already to, to know that consistency will, will kind of get me to play more minutes ultimately and not to stick out one session and, and not the other, you know, and, um, it was, yeah, I, 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 I stuck to, to kind of what had gotten me that far and, and what, um, what, what, yeah, what, what brought me to being drafted at that moment, you know, and ultimately not having too high expectations is, I think was a, was a big thing for me as well. Yeah. I wanted to start and, and yeah, I wanted to play from the first game on and, uh, and obviously do really well in preseason games and every session and all that stuff. Um, so that motivation was a hundred percent there and I wasn't content with, with not having, you know, not being, you know, that, and, and, um, but at the same time, if, if that weren't to happen or if, you know, if, if I was, wasn't going to be part of the first team or the second team, or whatever, not to let kind of discourage, not to let that discourage me as well. So I think that it, it goes back to. I was almost free, you know, I, I was just playing. I wasn't, wasn't thinking about everything too much. I didn't put these high expectations on myself. I, um, I, I, you were I tried to, yeah, I was the underdog. I, I didn't have anything to lose. Yeah. Um, you know, and then that, I think 
helped me in a sense. I didn't have anything to lose at the combine. You know, I didn't even think I was going to get drafted um, that highly because I wasn't international. You know, I thought that, okay, as an international, I'm, I'm going to be, I don't know, if I get lucky, you know, and then a, a couple of days before the combine, they offered me an MLS contract already. So I signed as a senior, which um, obviously showed me, okay, there must be some interest from some teams, you know, but so I also had that to fall back on. I obviously didn't have to fight for another contract. You know, maybe that would have added a little bit more pressure. Yeah. Um, I had my contract guaranteed, you know, because I was drafted in the first round. So that helped a hundred percent. And I knew I was going to be in Atlanta, but yeah, at the same time, I, I tried to just stick to who I was and stick to um, the player that I've I've developed into um, because it again it got me to that point it got me to to the draft and it, it, yeah it ultimately then led me to to start in that first game and um, yeah yeah Julian we, uh, we we use you as an example all the time as uh, the, the perfect rookie uh, because you <laughs> you were a rookie who came in you asked questions. Uh, you were one of the first ones there, along with all of, all of us as veterans. You were one of the last ones to leave every single day. Uh, you, you had this open mind to continuously uh, really want to learn uh, every single day. Uh, one of my main questions is, you know, I, I know I know you may have played center forward and center mid in college. Uh, yeah. Yet, yet, if I were to pick one right wing back uh, who has perfected their craft from the very first year and when we when we went into that back five uh, in the whole entire league i would probably say you are one of the top for the past five years right wing back in the league um how did your open mind and versatility and kind of flexibility within that mindset uh, to take on that challenge and just work through whatever obstacle you needed to work through and kind of pin that position down uh while you know uh having having so much more experience in other positions beforehand yeah no thanks thanks first of all and to go back to your first point i think it was for me coming into preseason i also knew that i didn't want to just sit at the table for example with all those young guys i didn't want to um you know to just come in and you know be like whatever about everything i wanted to soak in as much as possible from players like you like parky like uh jeff like you know established players that have had long careers uh, not just in, meta, in MLS, but internationally that have been through so much. And, um, I wanted to learn as much as possible. So uh, hopefully I wasn't too annoying, but uh, I would sit at the table with the old guys. I would, uh, you know, try and like shadow you guys as much as possible and just, you know, take in as much as I can and then apply things that I thought would work for me. Not everything, but things that I thought would work for me. So um, I think that would help me a ton to like get the first nerves out of the way you know and all those types of things to to really settle in quickly um and yeah about about my position and, and playing different roles i i played a lot of different positions throughout my career in college um my college coaches saw me as a right back and a left back when they came over to germany to recruit me and then i ended up playing center mid right wing and center forward for them in college so all over the map but um Switching from that 4-3-3 uh, from the first year to the 3-5-2 the that we did in Atlanta, um, I think I obviously knew that we got Darlington Nagby um, as a number eight coming in that offseason. Um, so I was like, okay, like maybe that might be a, a tough, tough hill for me to climb to, to out, outplay him in preseason and, and try and win a starting spot over him. And um, we had training obviously we, we unfortunately we lost in the playoffs in the first round uh after that first season so we had trained in a new formation already going into that off season so i knew somewhat what it would what it would look like and that i would play in that position and, and tata had talked about to me about playing as a right wing back and so i was really just open-minded about it again you know i was like okay i can we're gonna play this attacking style he you know, if the ball goes down your left side, Greg, he wants me to be in the box to score goals. It's not like this defensive role, for example, to um, to just stay back and, you know, help build up. You know, it was it was so much more than that. It was such a big position, I thought, for that system and, and for the way we played. And um, knowing 
Miggy and Joseph would, would take much attention that uh, something for me, you know, not a lot of teams had played 352 back then. Um, so I also knew that, okay, this might be something, you know, where you can st really stand out. And um, so I just took it up, took it up on me as a, as a big challenge again, you know, and as a challenge of like, just, you know, try and learn as much as you can, try and get up and down the field, try and, you know, do the things you do best, which is, you know, picking out a pass and, and trying to be dangerous in the final third and all those things and try and apply that to that style of play into that position. And yeah, it worked out, it worked out pretty well. And, and like, like I just said, I think Miguel and Joseph did free up a lot of space for me. And I think overall we had such a good balance in that team. Darlington Nagley was so great to play with. Um, obviously a great defenders behind me to kind of free up my back in that sense. So it was just a perfect fit. Um, and, and I had a ton of fun that year to play that position. Yeah, speaking awesome. of versatility, um, were you always bouncing around positions like when you were younger, like a, as, a, as a youth player, or did you have a set position? Because we get we get asked this a lot by players, right, where they're asked to play multiple positions and they're bouncing around and they, they're they fearful that if they don't stay in one position and learn it and master it, that, um, you know, maybe they won't be able to advance up. And so, you know, we're, we're trying to, you know, always that fine balance between versatility and, and um, specialty, um, you know, perfecting a craft, I guess. So what, talk us through a little bit of your youth, like were you changing positions and what would you, what do you think about that specialty versus uh, versatility? I'm, I'm always going to be a, a, on the versatility side here. I mean, it's, it's, it's me, you know, that's who I am as a player. Um, and I think when I, when I was younger, still in that academy setting, I think I played first midfield, center mid, attacking mid, and then ultimately ended up playing more right back, which a lot of center mids, you know, end up as right backs or left backs for some reason. Um, but, uh, it was, and then <laughs> I, ra I raised my hand Did I raised yeah. my hand. <laughs> And then once I once I kind of came out of that setting and started playing with my friends, I I was the most talented player in most of those teams. So they wanted me to, you know, kind of be in the middle of the park again. So I played more center mid and, and you know, kind of attacking midfielder again. Um, but yeah, and then, you know, as soon as you come to the pros, all of a sudden you're this young guy, um, you know, that that you see it so many times now, I think, when, when you get drafted that so many guys like look at John Gallagher in Austin he's a great example got drafted, played in college as a center forward came to Atlanta all of a sudden he plays a little bit of right wing left wing left back right back and now he's a great left back in MLS like who would have thought he would end up as a left back you know yeah. um, so I think it's just I think your question is is for me it's an easy answer because i think you have to be able to play multiple positions in this modern game to really be able to uh, to make an impact in the one specific position that you end up then playing maybe you'll play like i like i've played now right wing back since 2018 um basically throughout and but it, it doesn't mean that you know all the stuff that i've learned as a sentiment doesn't apply to me as a right wing back at times you know i think or you go through things in your head or when you watch film, what would the center mid think? What what does he want me to do? Um, how do we play together? How do we make it most effective as possible? Um, and I think a lot of things help me in that sense because I've played so many positions throughout my, yeah, my whole life that I understand maybe, okay, not obviously in detail and not as good as, you know, Joseph, for example, as a forward, but I know okay, what he's looking for in terms of service, what it would be, what would be easiest for him, you know, and um, what it, what a center mid would, would like out of me if he gets the ball and he turns open and, you know, I'm on the right side, if I'm on my horse or if I'm staying lower or, you know, those types of things. You kind of um, have those instincts, I guess, a bit more uh, when you do play those positions um, to then relate to those types of players that, that play with you. And for me, yeah, the more positions you play, uh, I think the better it is. Yeah, obviously you want to end up playing having one primary position because I don't know if you want to ever be the guy that doesn't have a position um, either. Um, but, uh, you know, I think if you are 
center mid, right back, right midfielder, right winger. I, I think those four positions, they go really well together and you can really, you know, kind of be in, in a lot of different lineups and a lot of different systems are very uh, usable for a lot of coaches. I think a lot of coaches like to have versatility like that, um, you know, but so I think to do those things in more of a youth setting and really get taught those things as well from different coaches have different perspectives. I think it's something something really good uh, that will only enhance kind of your career. Totally agree. Yeah, we we stress that versatility is is amazing uh, attribute for players. Um, you know, like you said, you get a sense of what other guys go through out on the field, right? That you don't right. you don't understand until you're in those shoes, right? I, I don't understand what a number six feels like with a guy on his back receiving a ball from a center back until I'm in that spot. And yeah. as a center back, I know, okay, what pass to give him and what pass not to give him and th those types of things, how fast and all, all those different types of little things. Um, so, and, and like you said, you never know who your next coach is going to be and where they think you're going to best fit on the field, right? So, yeah. you know, Greg goes and from to a left back. Yeah, and that's something I said. I was like, hey, in that first year in Atlanta, I, I started the first game as an eight, as yeah. a center midfielder, and I ended up playing right back that year a few games and most of it on the right wing yeah. um so i played three positions for tata and i think it, it's a sense of like i always say people always ask me this was like where would you choose if you want to play i was like honestly i don't care as long as i'm out on the field it gets you to play you know it gets you out on the field you get to be there you don't you're not just this oh you're not just a left winger who only cuts inside to his right foot. You're not that just that one way player. I think you become so multidimensional that you fit into so many coaches, different coaches ideas and, and systems and everything that it ultimately gets you more playing time as well. Very true. Agreed. Awesome, man. No, that's, that's, that's it for me, Jules. I don't want to take too much yeah. of your time, man, but uh, <laughs> those were, those were great. I know I could ask you so many, man. Um, I think you have a pretty special story, dude. Uh, I, I guess, this, this is kind of, I guess I can finish on this and you can answer shortly, is when, whenever you decided at 15 that you were going to take a different pathway to college, was it was it out of your mind that the professional pathway was kind of, you know, uh, out, out in the middle of nowhere? Or, or And then once you got to college and you said, okay, there might be an opportunity here, um, you know, the... Uh, I think, you know, we, we always talk to kids about that moment of, you know, it's plan A, plan A, plan A, but always understanding plan B has to be there um, and kind of understanding, you know, that for you, it was there was a never give up mentality because when that opportunity did come for you to ultimately make it to where you are right now, um, you know, but was there a moment in, in when you were at that 15, 16 and into college to where you had kind of written off uh, becoming a pro? Absolutely. Yeah. I think as soon as I had kind of realized what was happening when I was 15 um, and even going to college, I didn't really think that there was that big of a chance for me to get drafted after. Um, so it was it was really became that aha moment of or that, uh, yeah, that moment of like saying, OK, there actually might be a chance was after we had a really good sophomore season and I my personally had a really good year. Um, my coaches were like, hey, got to get you in summer school, winter school, so you can graduate um, without having to go back to your last semester so you can get into the draft. I was like, okay. like, And then, you know, I go around, I turn around and have a terrible junior season. So I was like, oh man, like, just, you know, why why are you putting all this pressure on yourself? You know, it's just go out there and play and end up, you know, having a good senior year that led me into the draft and like all those things. It was just... Um, Absolutely, like the the pro, the turning pro, and everything was once I w once I had that 15, 16 year old moment. I was I didn't really have it on the radar anymore, and that's why I went, you know, school and soccer the same same pathway, and, and tried to at the same time be good in soccer and continue to develop because it was still fun to me, and, and it may it may it, I enjoyed it, but at the same time being as realistic as possible in terms of of trying to be ready for for what's next and that those plans did not include playing playing pro which you know thankfully it, it, it happened uh, in the end and um i did turn pro and it, it's been amazing uh those past six years but 